Hi everybody. It's uh, February and uh, I'm hiking down in here to get some materials to make some snowshoes. I've been wanting to put some snares out for some rabbits up back. We don't have as many as we used to due to the coyote population. Some of you are probably wondering why I'm not snaring for the coyotes. I've got a good friend of mine that actually has hounds he uses to hunt coyotes. And uh, living in the Western Mountains, Maine, we bother a lot. And quite honestly, uh, I asked him if he'd uh, like to come up here and do some training with his dogs and get some of the coyotes. He's had a fair amount of luck. So, the answer to the snaring question, uh, I'd more than likely catch his hounds. So, I certainly don't want to do that. It's a win-win situation. One hand washes the other. He gets some hound hunting and uh, helps bring the population of the coyotes down. And it saves me some rabbits to snare. Uh, we've been hit with some pretty good snow lately. So the snaring has proven to be a bit uh, rugged getting in there and what a perfect opportunity to build some snowshoes. It's been very cold lately. Uh, night before last was 23 below zero. So the typical style of snowshoe I try to build would involve bending. And I know winter's not the best for bending. Certainly not when it's getting into sub-zero temperatures. My two boys are old enough at this point. And uh, the fun's beginning to start teaching them some of these crafts and arts uh, that are given to us in nature. So uh, here we go. I'm going to collect some of the materials and I'll be back with you soon. Thank you. Not sure if you can see this. It's an old buck rub. Looks like this past season's on this young pawpaw. Use these as the uh, the frame, backbone, whatever you like to call it, of the shoe. Some young popples got a little bit of bend to them. Young popples are known to be a little brittle, so you'll understand as I go forward with the design why that's not going to be a huge impact on the end result. See, I found a uh, big hemlock. Kind of a shame, but got blown down in a storm. Uh, might as well make use of the easy resource rather than felling one that's uh, still healthy. We got our hemlock, we'll get that up to the pawpaw and uh, we'll start constructing. Paracord. Uh, 
I understand in a survival situation, uh, that's not always something that you would be blessed to have in your possession at the time if you were stranded unexpectedly. Uh, but if you were in an outdoor situation, hiking, hunting, uh, camping, canoeing, kayaking, any, any outdoor activity at all, uh, more than likely you came prepared with some kind of a, a backpack with some essentials and uh, safety equipment and so forth, and certainly paracord would be in that category. So we're going to go ahead and pretend that uh, this was a situation where uh, I was fortunate enough, fortunate enough to have paracord. be a little careful not to leave too many actual sharp points on the end of your sticks uh, in the event they should break while you're using them uh, and the snow is really deep and you crush through those could essentially turn into uh, small spears uh, not that comfortable up on the calf area at all save yourself some time cutting this uh, if you just cut a little bit all the way around save a little bit of energy in the case that you're trying to conserve uh, and you only have to go a little ways in and then it should snap relatively easily we've done cutting and it stays pretty flush trim off the the sentiment just to get rid of some of them shot pieces. The closer the two snowshoes are in size and weight, believe it or not, will make a big difference going through the woods as far as balancing your weight. You'd want one five pounds heavier than the other, in other words. Not that it would be the end of the world and not that they're going to be exact, but do the best that you can. Okay, uh, these are the both of the sides. As I mentioned, you want the the heavier, bigger end for the back, um, so that the back of the snowshoe will naturally want to fall and bring the front of the snowshoe up. It makes it much easier for walking. Uh, and you see that I have notched both ends just a little bit. You don't want to go too far into the wood, otherwise you'll uh, promote it to crack. Um, but that's so that when you tie the ends with your paracord, it has something to seat and it won't slide. As well as when these ends come together, you want to shave the opposite side of the knot flat. 
so that when you put the two pieces to tie them together, they won't roll on each other. It's kind of a flat surface and it'll be much more stable. If you can see that. Notches off to the side. And between them, the stability in your foothold. I just want to give you a rough idea as I'm putting this together what the what the whole principle behind the or the whole theory behind the snowshoe is. That's where your foot's gonna rest, as well as that's what's also you notice I've got it not. That's also what's gonna hold the spread between them when you go to bend them. You see that's already bending. And that'll stabilize it. So I'm going to go ahead and start fastening one of these together and uh, I'll show you uh, as I progress. Okay, so now we're, we got the two foot support laced on, 
Mask on. Uh, now I'm going to notch the sides. Okay? I'm going to put three on each side, all about three inches apart, on each outer edge. This is so when I tie the paracord on to do some netting, uh, it'll have a place to grab. Otherwise, again, it's a taper. It's going to loosen up and fall off. However, you want to be a little careful. Uh, you don't want to notch too deep because you'll start to destroy the integrity. Uh, these are under tension as you see them bent. Um, if you notch them too far, they're going to snap. So you basically just want to get through the bark and into the meat just a little bit. Just enough to, to hold a couple few strands of, of paracord to hold tight in there. Um, and I'll show you as soon as I get finished. Now we'll lace it. Their overall framework's made. It's notched on the side. Uh, and now we're just going to string uh, some cordage on it, paracord. And uh, anyways, but I do apologize for the delay. Anywho. Back to the the snowshoes, uh, hot shoes. <laughs> uh, that's coming. Won't be long. Uh, as you can see, the snow is pretty deep here. I'm down the bare ground now with my fire. We probably got about, uh, oh, I'd say close to three and a half feet overall, and probably drifted much deeper in the lost spots. Well, I know it is a lost spot. All right, and I will follow this video up with a trial on these bad boys. I say that now. I guess uh, I guess the trial will tell that story, right? I don't believe there's going to be a problem. Slipknot. I'll start with the back end first. And when you reach the top notch on the bottom side, you're gonna notice your two notches and it's below this this heel support when we're done we're going to take another piece of cordage and go right through here and around this as well to hold, hold help support this whole mess up again we're on a taper going through the woods you hit branches for some reason this gets twitched out of this notch we don't want the whole thing basically sliding back and collapsing on it so that'll just give us some extra support uh it's not a complete fix but it'll uh it'll keep you out of a bind at the moment and you'll have time to fix it at a later time little short on that piece I'm trying to utilize scrap pieces of paracord so I'm just gonna connect the ends of the two add-on piece Bottom lacing, done. 
uh, just going to tie supports to those. Help me, let me out. And again, we're doing this solely for the purpose of helping to support this lacing up through here, the webbing. Should these get knocked out of their groove we constructed, the whole thing will not go kaput, kaput on us. So, you don't want to pull so much that you pull it out of the groove, the notch we put, but just enough so you can tell that you've taken most of the slack out, it's tightened it up a bit. And then we're going to go spiral this the opposite way this time around. This helps add a little bit of traction on the heel end. As well as helps against support this heel support so it doesn't crack. Pull that side up, just snug. All done. So the bottom lashings are all done. Webbing, netting, whatever you'd prefer to call it. The stuff that keeps you from falling through the snow. Uh, now we will go ahead and lace the top. And we'll be done. The only thing we have left technically right at this point is... Uh, binding the boots to the snowshoe itself and we're simply going to use a uh, a length of cordage paracord again uh, basically lash our boots to the snowshoe and uh, I think we can all figure out how to do that however I Maybe I'll do another video on lacing it and actually give you... Yeah, I'll do that. I'll follow this video up with a video of a trial as well as the uh, lacing the, uh, the harness for the boots onto the shoe. bottom lashings, netting, webbing, whatever you'd like to call it. <clears throat> that is the finished product, my friend. front of your foot, toes out here, you leave enough space here for your pivot, your boot can go in here, heel rests here, those are all notched and lashed on there, notched sides, paracord is right flush, not a real lot of chance of that coming out of there. The ends, top, bottom, and these are rugged, my friends. You're gonna 
you're gonna try have to try real hard to break that uh, again as I had mentioned you wanted the thinner ends up front the heavier in the back here is where the ball of the front of your foot will be so just for demonstration purposes balance wise I'm actually having to hold it the bottom automatically wants to drop so every time you step down and then go to your boot will be lashed to here every time you step up the bottom goes the back end drops which allows you to step forward much easier uh, if it was the other way around just for an example if your foot was back here every time you lift it it's gonna and all you're gonna do is be plowing snow uh, and the whole point of snowshoes is in fact to make traversing through the deep snow an easier chore uh, there is a little bit of weight I don't know what this weighs maybe I don't know three pounds three pounds maybe four tops uh, that may seem heavy it's like hauling another pair of boots right uh, but it's a whole lot better than uh, sinking in three to five foot snow uh, up to your waist trying to push and trudge and plow through so anyways I hope everybody enjoyed the time with me. Uh, this is, I don't know as if this is something you'd actually find in a book or not. This is, this is a duplicate of a pair I had made when I was a young fella. Uh, I've been doing this stuff most of my life. My thorough and utter enjoyment is everything outdoors. I hope you've enjoyed it. Anywho, this is my first video. I hope you might have, some of you might have even learned something. Uh, and certainly if there's anything that I wasn't very clear on, uh, or you, you'd like to see better or more up close, uh, or even for me to redo, uh, please just ask. I will do my very best to accommodate anybody's wishes any tips or pros and cons are welcome uh, I'm not offended that easily thank goodness so uh, I'm open to any comments at all if you so, cho so choose uh, I thank you very much for watching and I uh, I look forward to making some more videos for you uh, to share and uh, maybe even get to know some of you through comments and such so uh, I guess that's it thank you very much for your time my name's Glenn 12 point trout see you in the outside